Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. This is the Corona Diaries, episode number 92. My name is Rivers Langley. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Uh, not going to lie to you people, I'm hanging out by myself at Disgraceland. I'm all alone. Uh, Sam is feeling a little bit under the weather. Uh, Carter is off in the goddamn wind. And as we know, uh, at the end of last episode, Daniel Magden moved back to Texas. So I'm just sitting on my ass by myself here. But this is why I pay my phone bill is because in my telephone, I have access to some of the funniest people in America. And we're going to hear from two of them today. First up, we're going to be hearing from Fifi Dosh. Uh, Fifi Dosh is one of the first comedians that I met when I moved to Los Angeles. So I'm definitely going to bring that up uh, when we chat in just a moment. And then after that, uh, we're going to be talking to my co-commentator at the Brian Kendricks Wrestling Pro Wrestling. It is America's emotional support Sasquatch. Eric Barnes uh, is going to be calling in and we're going to chat about that stupid ass vice presidential debate and some other fun stories. So stick around. This one is going to be awesome. I can't wait for y'all to hear it. And uh, I believe, oh, hey, phone's ringing. Here's Fifi. <laughs> calling in now from uh, just a few blocks away in East Hollywood. It's our friend Fifi Dosh. How you doing, <laughs> Fifi? Hi, how are we doing, Rivers? <laughs> I can't complain too much. I wasn't sure if you had uh, relocated or not. It's hard to keep track of all my friends uh, in, in all of this craziness. I don't know. I can't keep Where hold of who's left LA and who's still here. But it's you know, it's good good to know you're still here. And the, again, the amount, the population density of people we all know who live in this neighborhood, but we're not aware of it, is astounding. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it says a tremendous amount about not only this place geographically, but our community. Spiritually, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, by the way, before is that a mandolin behind you? Uh, yeah, it's a, several things. There's a there's a uh, there's a banjo. Oh, there's, it's a banjo too. There's a uh, an SG uh, electric. There's a Alvarez acoustic, and uh, there's a uh, national uh, hubcap top, and then uh, yeah, mandolin in the back. That's that's so. Ri- I started playing mandolin this year before, uh, like a couple months before COVID hit. Oh, that was probably a good thing to pick up. Uh, it's been great. I mean, it. I got inspired by the. Have you seen the Ken Burns country music documentary? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was watching. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's fantastic. My favorite was uh, they were talking about when Hank Williams was at you know the deepest in his you know kind of alcoholism and stuff, and he is at the Grand Ole Opry, and Minnie Pearl comes over to him and goes, "Boy, you look like death eating a cracker," <laughs> and I. <laughs> And it's so like it's it's like a perfect southernism that I've never heard before. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that in the back pocket. Although obviously the the back pocket has gotten a hole in it since uh, since COVID started. I will say because I can't remember fucking anything. Uh, That's pretty great southernism right there. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, uh, I, I met you when I first moved to LA, basically yeah. in, in the in those uh, halcyon days at Flappers, uh, where you were hosting the bar mic. <laughs> uh, oh my god, I totally forgot I did that. I I talk about that. That was such a character building experience. A friend of mine fell asleep once at your mic, like on the table, like math class, just done. And it was about two in the morning and you finally called his name and he went up there and for all practical purposes was still asleep. Like there, he was not what you would call conscious all the way. And there was one non-comedian there. uh, A lady was sitting at the bar and he goes, Hey, are are you a comic? (laughs) And she's like, nope, just here to watch. And he's like, why? <laughs> what are you doing here? You're a pretty lady. Why are you in the place like this at two in the morning? And uh, yeah, so that's that's my big flapper's memory is uh, is all kinds of stuff like that. And then also the fun little quirk of... I think technically across the street was Glendale or something, and they yeah. they had a they had a no smoking uh, thing in Burbank. So all the comedians would walk across the street where it was technically Glendale to smoke, and would try to listen for their name coming down the down the tunnel from the bar across the street, and then run across, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> to hear their name called. So yeah, you're that that's that's like right when I moved here. So you you are very much wrapped up in the early experiences of me moving to LA, and then of course uh, you know it's always always nice running into you here and there in the world of stand-up yeah. comedy. So hopefully we'll get to do that again one of these days. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about well, you. You know what? I, I haven't decided. I don't think I'm doing stand-up anymore, man. You're not going back? No, I don't think I am. I don't. I I did it the other night at the comedy store window 
you know, illegally, thanks to Comrade Newsom and the fun Stotsy. Wait, wait, did you say window? What's going on over there? You know how, like, in the original room, there's that window that looks over the patio? Yeah. People are standing in the window, and because they're allowed to open, be open for drinks, what? but they can't, so they're standing in the window. <laughs> I didn't know. You're the first comedy store person I've talked to. Oh, that's oh, yeah. fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. Well... I mean, I, I would ask how that's going, but maybe you've already answered the question. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's not good. Objectively, it's not great. But what are you going to do? But like, just personally, I did it, and I'm like, okay, I don't like this. Yeah, I kind of haven't liked it for years. Okay, that's and fair. like, look, transitioning is sort of like, you know, the guy in Breaking Bad who runs the vacuum cleaner store. Yeah, Robert Forster. Yeah, it gives you a whole new identity. It's kind of like that. It's like, man, I can be out. You, you know what I mean? That's like, true. Yeah, you, you got the, the whole world open to you. Uh, you know, as St. Thomas Petty said, the future is Saint wide Thomas, open. St. <laughs> Thomas Aquinas Petty. Yeah, yeah. The future is wide open. Yep. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Okay, well, that's... You know, I, I don't like being up till 2 a.m. I like, you know... Getting up in the morning, playing bluegrass, and making homemade pickles, and hey, I've, doing... been, I've been doing the same thing. Oh, I'm proud of you. Yeah, well, we need to be closer. Like we, I, we really I do. Already, yeah, absolutely. I can already feel like we've wasted time not being close. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been growing uh, cucumbers out back and making pickles and salsa and all kinds of crazy shit. That's oh, God bless you. Yeah, I've been uh, making stuff and you know trying to be proactive as opposed to uh you know sitting there and just freaking out because <laughs> that's yeah. that's easy to do anybody can yeah, do that it is but like i kind of feel i kind of feel if you don't do that every now and again like you're maybe not addressing feelings oh what oh just oh i i didn't mean uh internally i just meant like watching the news and shit right 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 <laughs> well although which which has been fun doing this show because it is you know it is sort of a news show but my my goal has been like unless something Unless, let's say, the funniest thing that's ever happened happened, oh, let's say, over the weekend, uh, then we got to talk about that because that's yeah. hilarious. Uh, but, you know, other than that, it's 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 a lot of fun just to watch, uh, you know, humanity kind of uh, melt down. But, you know, we talk about uh, we talk about the Citizen app. Are you on the Citizen app for this neighborhood? No, is that that sounds that sounds ominous. It is. It's a it's an app that essentially it's a it's a snitching app where it combines I think like police dispatch and then also just if you just see some shit going down you can report it and it'll pop up on the app. So it'll be things like, you know, dudes in in the neighborhood like, you know, carrying swords. I believe you mean to say there are cool dudes in the street carrying swords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my a friend of mine said that there was a guy who'd been living in like the maintenance closet of their apartment building, and sure. and they had like a uh, and my friend was like, oh, he and he had a machete, and then he sent me a picture uh, that the that the landlord had sent him when they you know pulled the guy out of the closet, and uh, and I was like, oh, that is actually a katana, that's not a machete. Uh, For those of you who don't live here, this is the most East Hollywood story one could tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's uh it's been it's been interesting but uh i mean yeah how, how have you been besides doing uh doing pickles and learning mandolin what else do you got going on over there um you know like i had kind of a rough spot for like maybe the last couple of days but like overall like a headline is is this has been the happiest year of my life like i like I literally got like my hormone treatments from a gender transition like the day before the stay at home order went down. Whoa. So it's like I just my joke is it's like I feel like I've been locked in a room like turning into a werewolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that might be good getting used to all those uh, you know, kind of internal changes yeah. and stuff behind closed doors so when everything is over you can kind of reemerge right. and f feel it feeling normal and stuff like that. So, yeah. it's good. But, but like the the last week I really had to be like, look, I am not happy about this. This is difficult and challenging because I kind of feel like for the first half of COVID I was like you know, overly positive girl where I could, I could like be literally on flames and be like, I actually feel more connected to people. And I'm just like, the fuck? I just ran out of gas on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It's a big ocean with a lot of waves. I think this whole thing has just yeah. been up and down for a lot of people for sure. So, mm -hmm. 
Well, I'll, I'll ask you, uh, you know, I've got two questions I've been asking everybody because honestly, I'm, I'm treating this like an anthropological survey of, of, of comedians and, uh, you know, kind of podcast people writ large yeah. over, over this thing. So I'll, uh, I'll ask you my, uh, one, the first of my two questions is, uh, have your neighbors been doing anything weird during the, all of this? Oh yeah. And here's, he, I'll tell you something fucked up. Like I, I got, I got a new neighbor to the West of me, I think maybe in February before COVID every, like I'd say every couple of weeks I hear him have a screaming argument with his girlfriend. And it's like, I'm listening to him play like Incubus on acoustic guitar a lot. And he's like, Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Motherfuck- motherfuckers learning Polly again. And it's like, <laughs> But you know what's haunting about it is, like, I have been this dude. Like, I swear to God, I was the most miserable, angry boy you've ever met. And, you know, if you don't know me, if you've ever met in your life. So it's it's like my... It's like if I never transitioned, it's like my guy self is moving, living next door and it's fucking tri- like, <laughs> this is like a black, me- it's like a black mirror episode that wouldn't suck. It's just, <laughs> that's, a, I, I was going to say that is, before you, before you said that that was, uh, that was yeah. your, your, your guy self. Uh, I was going to say that's a, you know, domestic disputes and acoustic guitar music is a tough combo. That's a rough, oh, uh, yeah. that's a rough road to hoe, as they say. That yeah, is- <laughs> and, it, and it's just like I walk past it. I'm like, oh, I've, I've never reacted to anything like that in my life. Let's go look at Sunflower. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's fantastic! So, yeah. Oh, so that that's going on on the left. Of you any anything else you've seen like out on the streets or anything like that? Or uh... um, you know, I've been trying to like as we talked about, like I've been trying to get out of town a lot. I went up to Montana for a bit. I've, my friends have a farm up there. Oh, um, how was how was that? What what part, well, of, what part of Montana? I guess I should ask first. It's the south. It's southwest Montana, and um, it's uh, it's like where Bozeman is. Yeah, I think I've been through that. I once uh, about five years ago, I drove from uh, the Grand Tetons up to Glacier and went through Yellowstone. Oh so, yeah. So I believe yeah. I've I've been through that part of the country. We went up to obviously like Glacier's uh, Kalispell, Whitefish, that area. It's just uh, yeah. unbelievable. Glacier is so beautiful. It's like a joke. It really is. It's crazy. You're yeah. like, I didn't know rocks could do all that. You know? Uh, yeah, it's 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 incredible. Like I forget what turn it is, but like there's like you're going through a woodsy area to get up there, and then like you take a little left turn, and the trees clear, and it's like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And this is like. It's bre- the the fact that there isn't a car accident on there like every hour and a half is nuts to me. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and, and for people listening that might not know, it's because we're in spooky season here. If you need a reference for what what is Glacier National Park, what does that look like? The opening scene of The Shining, the helicopter flying and following Jack Nicholson and his family in the little yellow uh, beetle. That yep. is that's St. Mary's Lake in Glacier National Park, and it is yep. it is exactly as beautiful as that uh, in real life. And uh, that was the part that I got the most jazzed about because I'm a I'm a huge fan of The Shining. As soon so as soon as I found out, I was like, oh shit, that's the lake with the helicopter. I know that. So. I love that movie too. By the way, <laughs> I'm not even a horror movie person, and I'm I'm kind of obsessed with The Shining. Oh, it's it's incredible, and and I will say I was at Glacier. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was like the last weekend of September. So everything in the park was about to shut down because they'd be getting their first snow. And I realized uh, we were at, uh, I think it's called the St. Anne's uh, Lodge. It's it's actually up just north of Glacier in Canada in Alberta at Waterton Lakes. And it's this beautiful old hotel very similar to the Overlook, and yep. and it was the last week they were going to be shut down. And unlike the Overlook, you know they weren't going to have caretakers. They just board the, you know, they just they nail everything shut so the bears can't get in, and they just abandon ship for the winter. Yeah. And but it, because it was the last week, everyone was like, it was like senioritis. You know, everybody was like, we're out of here. And half of them are Australian, and the other half are Russian. And they were just like, we can't wait to leave. And it it had that exact vibe of when Jack Nicholson's in the lobby, and everybody's kind of coming and going going and leaving and he's going to interview and I was like I think this book would have gotten written no matter what because there is something creepy about an Australian just guy just being like there's not going to be anybody out here until uh, until March not a single person you know <laughs> you're like all right the, the, cool. sh- the shading would not work in an Australian accent I'm sorry <laughs> oh they could be sinister they're sinister in the way Blindly, like <laughs> I'm trying to finish my book over here you keep interrupting me <laughs> Well, Benny knocked over the papers. I was just trying to yank him up, the little bugger. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they can they can be creepy. I think we can do yeah. this. Yeah, I'll I'll make them creepy, or we could swap them out for a Russian fella. They're creepy too. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's that's gorgeous up there. So what what did you end up uh, doing while you were in Montana? Just hiking, playing with goats, playing mandolin in fields, standing by cows. <laughs> Wow. Doing that kind of thing. It was great, man. I had such a good time. <laughs> that sounds like the life. That is, uh, I, I think I saw some of that on your, uh, on your Instagram too. So yeah. that's, that's why I was asking. I was like, cause it was, I feel like your, your posts were coming in right around the time everybody else's were like when they had left for good, for good. And I was like, oh man, did Fifi leave LA? What the, f- what happened? Uh, but oh, okay. Good. Well, you know, you know, I'm considering it like, hey, it's, but you know, I think that's, uh, that's going around. Yeah. I mean, I'm really at a point where I'm like, okay, what do I, I mean, COVID aside i'm really at a point like what do i really want what really makes me happy and it is not what i thought it was and uh yeah yeah so here we are yeah, I mean it's it's happened. I mean my uh, my co-host moved to Texas yesterday. Yesterday was his last episode, and as soon as we were done rolling, he's like, "I'm getting on a plane. Bye." Please wait. <laughs> so it's it's happening. It's happening for sure. It took it took longer than I thought, but yeah, it's it's starting to happen. Um, my other question I've been asking people: Have you seen anything strange at the grocery store? And I'm excited to hear this because. I'm pretty sure you and I have the same grocery stores. <laughs> you know, I've, I'm changing grocery stores just because I can't do can't do the old food for less on sunset anymore. Oh no! There's one thing that you know. If there's one thing that COVID taught me, like <laughs> the food for less on sunset has standards, and those standards are: I don't care what's going on. We're not refilling the cart wipes. We're not <laughs> filling them during a pandemic. We're not refilling them on the Fourth of July. <laughs> Yeah, li- we're not refilling them. <laughs> Life's too short to shop at Food for Less, I believe is the old saying. Yeah. yeah, we are not letting this disease change our way of life. We're gonna soldier on. Yeah, <laughs> you got to. Yeah, I actually don't go to that food. I, I I always go just to the either the Vons or the Ralphs on Vermont or Virgil. That's uh, that, those are those are my stopping grounds, and those have I been can't... weirdly regular, sort of normal. Uh, By the way, I gotta say, I it, when I went into Montana, I, I I achieved a trans milestone in that I peed in a women's room in a Walmart in Pocatello, Idaho. Hell so yeah! <laughs> they go score one for me. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. By the way, uh, no, no one's. I don't know how much you've been around. No one's doing shit for masks like east of here. I, I'm gonna go back to Alabama for Thanksgiving and yeah. most likely stay there through the new year because pff, why not? You know what yeah, else? What I mean, else is going on? I think every yeah, and especially when I when I talk to people like you who are like, yeah, I went home and and hung out and played with goats in a, on a mountainside. I'm like, that sounds tremendous. I I would I would love that. It really was, honey. I can't, by the way, I bet, how do you feel about Alabama? I would love to, because like, I know very little experience of the South. I've never really been there. Yeah. And, like, I'm, like, I'm from South Dakota, which is similarly stigmatized i would love to i would love to know like like your your experience there what you feel about it yeah i mean i i think uh i mean this this podcast has largely been a a lot of it is dealing with that sort of southern identity especially when you move to los angeles and you kind of have to put that in context with the rest of my life i mean i'm saying this as a you know a, a What's that? I'm sorry, you cut off for a second. Oh, no, I I was going to say, I mean, I I say this, uh, you know, fully acknowledging, you know, straight white manness that I like it, but also, you know, it's one of those places that immediately aware of what the issues are you know like I, I always have to remind people especially i mean i'm sure you know this play i'm sure you've played uh rooms that are bars in the middle of nowhere shit like yeah. that you know and, and playing those rooms is is kind of similar to playing you know just over on the other side of those mountains behind us you know what i mean yeah. like once you yeah. get outside of los angeles you become sort of aware like oh america kind of has a flavor and it's the yeah. it's the big cities that are different kind of a thing so yeah, yeah. But, then, but then it's also like i mean how many people live in the cities like you know that's true yeah 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 no for sure it's always interesting but that that is the thing whenever i whenever i end up doing uh doing stand up in places like that as soon as i mention i'm from alabama uh you know if people are like taken aback or whatever i have to remind them i'm like hey we got bakersfield and fresno in this state too so yeah. ju- judge not lest you be judged california uh, i mean there are the, like there are more- more people in like half of the valley than there are in the whole state of South Dakota. Right, you know? right. So, I think yeah. I think LA's population is exactly the same as the whole state of Alabama. I think yeah. it's about four or five million, something like there that. There are four or five million people in Alabama. 
Yeah. Something like that. South Dakota is like 800,000. Jeez, yeah. See, the big city in South Dakota is this town called Sioux Falls, and I'm talking like maybe 150, 175,000 people. Wow. And they're so goddamn snooty about it, Rivers, because they like because they have like red lobsters and shit that they look down like their nose. <laughs> <laughs> and did, did you grow up in a small town? I, I grew up in Auburn, uh, which is it's yeah. it's weird. It's a it's a small town that because the major employer in town is the university, and and we've got tons and tons of money coming in from football. It's a small yeah. it's a small town that's largely shielded from outside a lot of outside economic forces that affect other small towns. So uh, yes and no, a, a small town that is unlike other small towns because it has a huge university. Yeah, I I always ask people because we would do this thing growing up where like this was before online shopping was like really that much of a thing where you'd go to like a town like Sioux Falls or Minneapolis, you'd drive there over say a three day weekend and you would just like go to the mall. That's it's like a mall vacation. Right. Because you got to buy shit. Because you just can't, you, like, there's so many, like, you can't get clothes, you can't, you know, decorate your house, really, right. very well. So you would just go there, and you'd go to, like, Camp Snoopy in the Mall of America, and it's like, oh, we're gonna, I'll probably get a toy or two, and Mom's <laughs> gonna buy a lot of clothes, and I'm gonna go to, and we're gonna go ride the roller coaster, and, yeah. so, so that was the, that was the big mall. I, I've, I've never been to the Mall of America, but I'm eternally fascinated to. by it, you know? <laughs> it's it's utter I mean I don't I don't know why you'd go there unless you're like a hayseed like myself. <laughs> well, hey, me you know, I uh, here's why is because Nickelodeon used to fucking do everything at the Mall of America. So if you're if you're 34 years old, you grew up watching Nickelodeon, they yeah. made it seem like the Mall of America was the greatest thing in the world. So I still have that wiring in my brain where I'm like, I got to at least see it. It's got a roller coaster inside the mall. You know? Oh, that's the 80s, baby. I know. So <laughs> I'm going at some point. And, and we, we have uh, we have a couple of listeners uh, uh, to this podcast that are based out of Minnesota that have uh, been begging us to come there and do uh, do stand up and, and hang out. So when it's cool again, I, Min- Minneapolis is where I'm coming. I will go there. <laughs> you know what? I got to give props to minnesota minnesota is an incredible state not to, not to ring this bell too much but like minnesota's like minnesota is one of the few places where there are like true selfless liberals like because uh-huh. they're not like there's nothing like performative or like what can i gain on this or i'm trying to maintain face kind of thing like there can be in la i'm not saying everybody's that sure but I mean, they have no self-aggrandization at all. And, like, I think they were, like, the one state that voted for Mondale or something. (laughs) Yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I have a news story from just just over the border from Minnesota in, uh, in Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, boy. Uh, so <laughs> we go from a place where there's no self-aggrandizement to this. At 12.30 a.m. last Friday, Fargo police responded to the 2700 block of 8th Street North on a report of gunshots. When they arrived, officers were told that there was a man dressed like a gorilla carrying a machete. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which uh, speaking of The Shining, it's it's very you know at some point she does see those two guys in the animal costumes and stuff like that, and then you know Jack has an axe, so it's it's got a slight Shining vibes to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The gunshots turned out to be the ape-suited man setting off large fireworks. Police said the suspect had also threatened people inside the building, saying that he was going to blow it up with the fireworks, which. It's a lot of fireworks to do that. Uh, they evacuated the building, uh, made sure everyone was safe, and uh, negotiated with the suspect for several hours before he surrendered. So I knew you were from South Dakota, so I can't, you know, I, I don't need you to vouch for the heathens in North Dakota. No, but, I won't. Uh, they're, they're, they are dogs compared to us. <laughs> they, are sw- they are swine. They are, they're, they're apes. They're, they're, they're gorillas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like a lot of people, my whole experience with, with Fargo is the movie and most yeah. of the, most of the movie is Minneapolis. Uh, the, 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 the meetup happens in Fargo. The rest happens in Minnesota. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, however, are you watching the Fargo series? I've seen, I've seen them all. I, I'm going to wait until it's done and then watch them all straight through. I know it's airing right now and I, I've heard That's it's the- good. I, I loved, uh, season, I think season two was my favorite, uh, so far. You know, you know how I just said, like, we would go, like, to, like, a Minneapolis or a Sioux Falls and go shopping for a three-day weekend? Yeah. Anytime anyone would be like, do you want to go to Fargo this weekend? Everyone would be like, fuck no. 
<laughs> I, uh, I I think you know my my friend Luke Jensen. He's he's a Fargo. Yeah, he's yeah, a Fargo yeah. guy. Uh, That's right. Yeah. So I know one. I know one Fargo person, and Luke's yep. Luke's pretty cool. Uh, my favorite Fargo story he ever told me was he was waiting at like let's say it was an Olive Garden, some restaurant. They were wait waiting to be seated. And he told me that they call the name, you know, how they call the names and, and, yeah. and uh, somebody calls the name. They go, uh, Tollefson, party of three, Tollefson. Yeah. And this guy stands up and he goes, that's us, the Tollefsons, America's family of the future. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's cool. I love that. I was like, that's the weirdest goddamn thing I've ever heard. To call your own family the America's family of the future is so, it's really that's... something special. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you what, he's either the coolest guy in the world or the worst. Yeah. Or or, you know, one of them is now, you know, in jail with a mugshot and a monkey suit, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well we can't say they're not making history. Absolutely, yeah. They are America's family of the future. Uh you know how there's all that fracking up there? Yes. Oh yeah, well there's shitloads of money uh in, in yeah. North Dakota now that people don't know how to sp- there's not you literally can't yeah. spend it. There's nothing to be spent it on. Yeah, and like the people who are there or like most of them are criminals and ex-cons and that kind of thing anyway so it's like it's not <laughs> i'm really gonna invest in a whatever and I, I don't i'm not even putting anybody down this is what's and it's like it's fucking up like because like people either fire they make it get, or they make a pile of money and they leave so like east montana is like a lot of those bakken fi- the field is called the bakken field uh-huh. a lot of them are spilling in east montana and like billings crime is going way i mean this is you know Whoa. yeah wow you know, I'm only like passingly familiar with the situation up there. All I know is that the way it's been described, there was a, a comedian who actually uh, passed away right at the beginning of coronavirus, not uh, not of COVID, but of uh, a yeah. uh, heart attack or something like that. But his name was Vic Henley, and he's a comedian from Alabama. And yeah. he told this great story on uh, the Risk podcast with uh, Kevin Allison from the state where he when he was at Auburn, he went to school where I went to school, but he was running numbers on frat row where he would basically take take gambling bets from everybody all the fraternity kids and you know he was a bookie essentially and he started making so much money and he couldn't put it in a bank so he just had it in his shoe in a closet <laughs> but he had so much money and he was saying like he could not spend the money cuz Auburn where I live at the time in the in like their late 80s early 90s there was nothing to spend that much money on so yeah. he, it was just it just became a like a burden because there was just too much of it. Like he said, he went to some restaurant and tried to order Dom Perignon, and they're like, "We don't actually have that. We just put it on the menu <laughs> to seem fancy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and shit like that." So I, I I imagine that scene when when they describe the you know the shale uh, oil fields and stuff up in North Dakota. That's kind of what I think of is is just not being able to spend all the money they're making out there. The fact that there's not some kind of like gritty mini series about like oil drillers in North Dakota is kind of is a huge wasted opportunity as if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, uh this has been fantastic to talk to you. Uh Fifi, please tell people where they can find you online and uh and get a hold of you and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I tell you what everybody, I have a podcast called Fifi Quest. That's F I F I Q U E S D. And it's where I document my transition week by week and just don't like there's a million weird little things about it that like you wouldn't think about. And I thought and I just kind of be like, here's what I'm doing this week. Here's what's going on this week. Here's how I'm trying to become who I really am spiritually, biologically, emotionally this week. And it's I feel like you get to see me change week by week, which is interesting. And yeah, and what's great for me is like you watch like any episode three weeks ago and it just cringes the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never, never go back and listen to old podcasts. My God. No, but, I, but you know, you know, like when you you know, when your Facebook like tells you, hey, here's a photo from eight years ago. Yeah. Or whatever. And you're like, oh my God, dear God in heaven. Like when you're trans, that's like every six hours. Sure. Yeah. It's probably, <laughs> it's, oh my God. Yeah. It's probably every day. Jeez. Yeah. Oh Lord. Well, I, I will say this. Uh, Fifi Dosh, you are, if even if you never go back to doing stand up, I will say I, I have encased in amber in my mind 
you are one of the funniest goddamn people ever. Uh, like when, when I used to watch you at Flappers, when I'd see you around town, it was always a good. It was always guaranteed to be a good time if you were on the bill. And so I'm I'm sure the podcast is. Uh, I'm I'm so glad you're doing it. And for people listening, it's going to be hilarious because Fifi Dosh is hilarious. So oh, you're yeah. So- it, honey. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for doing this. This was so fun. And everybody, uh, check out Fifi Quest. Rivers, this was great. Thank you so much, hon. Calling in from Sherman Oaks, it's Eric Barnes. What's up, Eric? What's up, Rivers? Uh, not much. Just uh, uh, We're recording a little later. Just watched the vice presidential debate in which... The most interesting thing that happened was that a fly stayed on Mike Pence's head for a really long time. And his eye burst in the middle of everything, too. (laughs) I choose to believe he turned into a zombie corpse or revealed himself as such. It was suspected for a long time, but now it's been confirmed. I mean, that that is kind of like, that's where we're at. Did you see the raccoon video? from this morning uh, with the CNN guy. <laughs> no, there was a CNN raccoon video and no one told me? You don't even get to see the raccoon. That's that's how bad America is. They don't even show you any raccoon action. There's a reporter on the lawn of the White House and literally in the middle of this broadcast, he goes, Hey! Hey! Oh! <laughs> and like <laughs> makes a Godzilla noise and shakes his arms because... A fucking raccoon has no more fear of humans. The raccoons have seen us for what we are, scared and stupid, and they have no more fear of us. Their their fear of man has dissipated, and they're just attacking reporters with bright lights. Well, you know, I, like I think I think the thing of it is, is that for a hundred years now, raccoons have been eating our trash, so they've slowly gotten to know who we are based on what we throw away, and they're like, oh. Top of the food chain. Fuck this. Killer ape my ass. I'm coming for him. I know your dick don't work. You know? (laughs) I've seen empty (laughs) pill bottles in the trash as I look for dried apples and (laughs) rotted meat. You know? (laughs) And I don't know if you heard. That happened on the lawn of the White House. (laughs) (laughs) He wasn't reporting from, like, Camp David or someplace in the woods where it makes sense. This is the middle of goddamn D.C. Rivers, if you were a (laughs) raccoon, the White House trash has to be the best trash with this president, given all the McDonald's he eats, all the remnant dry Diet Coke that is congealed (laughs) around the dumpster. All of that stuff is the things that raccoons yearn. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, lot, lots of special sauce on rappers there. Also, what a what a name for a reporter, uh, Joe Johns. Joe Johns, change your fucking name. It sounds like a joke that Joe Johns was was attacked by yeah. raccoons on the White House lawn, but it happened. Well, that sounds like a Kentucky fuck news team. <laughs> Yeah, Joe Johns got attacked by a darn gurn raccoon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Reporting live from the porch. It's it's just so, so goddamn ridiculous. Uh, If if we're telling the truth here, I was just kind of going in and out on the debate. If people are listening to this, if they're looking for some deep analysis from me, I mean, I was so goddamn bored. Here's what you can walk away with. It was boring, and that was refreshing as fuck. A friend of mine said that. I was texting with uh, my buddy Miles, and he was like, boring is good. And I was like, subjective art form. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it was better than the last one because we could actually hear what uh, the bullshit that each one of them was saying. But one was definitely more full of bullshit than the others. And you could tell because a fly landed on one of them. Oh, man. It was so funny. That all of a sudden, where I was watching, that became almost like a horse race or something like everybody gets all tense, like... When's it going to fly away? When's it going to fly away? Man. And it stood there for, what, two minutes? Four minutes? It was on there for longer than any fly, I think, has ever been on me, I think. I don't know. Flies normally fly away. It was weird. So Mike Mike Pence, spiderweb hair confirmed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when it did finally fly away, everyone I was watching it with went, aw. It's like, (laughs) aw. Damn it. (laughs) 
We wanted it to die up there. We wanted it to die up there. We wanted another fly to show up, maybe change things up. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, different kinds of bugs, scorpions, yeah, yeah. potato <laughs> bug, you know, all of them just start just a, a fucking man a mantis slowly emerges yeah. from the crown of his head, you know. Something like and that. And starts attacking the fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, just a terrarium on Mike Pence's head. That's that's what I was that's what we should have had. Man. Yeah. Well, what you been up to, man? This is the this is the first time we've chatted on uh, on the free show in a while. Nothing too terribly much, sadly. It's uh, you know, it's still the quarantine. Still looking for work. Yeah, applying for jobs, writing. I mean, I'm writing some stuff for both uh, personal projects and to just uh, you know, for marketing company jobs and shit. And in the meantime, just collecting the little bit of unemployment that's left that's around and doing my damnedest to get work because this is getting very tiring. Well, uh, you know, Trump announced that uh, if you reelect him, then we'll get our checks. That was the most recent news during uh, that. That was the 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 comet's tail of the uh, of the mania uh, tweet storm that we've got uh, the past couple days. Uh, he paid seven hundred fifty dollars to have the best medical care possible to do his damnedest to withhold it from any literally anyone else. Oh, except for re, uh, uh, Regenetron, Regeneron? Regeneron, which sounds like some shit from like a Verhoeven movie. It sounds like some Total Recall shit. I, I, I think it's a uh, expired Energon cube from the Transformers cartoon. That's what oh, I think Oh, yeah, it is. there you go. <laughs> God. But yeah, I'm doing what I can on my end. I have to work remotely because uh, I'm immunocompromised, so... I'm immunocompromised, and a lot of jobs aren't paying enough to for an adult to live on, as you probably have noticed. So, uh huh. We'll see. Yeah. Um. Well, we kind of did a big rundown yesterday of all the funny things that happened. Uh. You know, when he got COVID and started, uh. You know, low key murdering all of the Republicans around him. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> God. But. I forgot to mention, I brought this up and then I completely forgot to mention. So I had two two things that left over from yesterday that I have to talk about. Uh, one has to do with Biden, which was where he, you know, in the in the spirit of being a good sport, uh, pulled his ads from TV, his negative his negative ads, <laughs> which uh, like he was thinking like, oh, well, you know, if I was in the same situation, I would want him to do that for me. <laughs> Why do people think Donald Trump deserves a benefit of any doubt yeah listen the moral high ground is what has killed us is the problem yeah not not actual moral morality actual morality uh is uh, the lack of that is what's killing us but perceived moral high ground uh posturing which uh, resulted in, uh, of course, as soon as Trump got out of the hospital, he was all roided up like he was Hulk Hogan in 1989 and uh, tweeting up a storm, brother. Putting a leg drop on that stimulus bill. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then also just talking mad shit about Joe Biden for like the whole day after he'd pulled his negative ads. And it's like, why did you think that it would be any different? Yeah, it's like, yeah. I'm not as pissed at him as I am at someone like Rachel Maddow for being like, we're not allowed to make fun of him. This is like if your friend was smoking too much and got lung cancer. It's like, he's not my friend, motherfucker. I can make he's fun of that He's not my guy. friend. And also the guy, that, uh, your friend that smoked too much, gave lung cancer, did it to himself. He didn't do it to over 200,000 people that are dead, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. The the other thing that I, I wanted to mention that I forgot to yesterday that is it's I mean it's it's the it's the funniest shit when someone does this. Like if this was in a Danny McBride movie, it, we would all love it. And that is uh he tried to blame the fact that he got COVID on <laughs> soldiers and policemen trying to hug and kiss him <laughs> i'm just too like, lovable i'm too lovable i'm lovable and huggable he literally said that he's like well you know the problem is when you're around uh soldiers and policemen they try to come up to you they try to hug you and kiss you and what are you gonna do they try to hug you and kiss you and suck your dick and all kinds <laughs> of things the implication being like they're dirty people they do low-paying jobs they're dirty they're made of dirt <laughs> They'll get dirt in me. Uh, <laughs> That's the problem with the help. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee behind closed doors he calls all like all military servicemen, all the any anyone that's below him the help. Uh, I guarantee that. Yeah, absolutely. Regardless of stature, fucker. <sighs> oh, man, jeez. Uh, 
<laughs> well, I, I we'll get away from that for a moment yeah, yeah. and get get on to another uh, uh, bit of uh, you know kind of uh, ridiculous news, uh, and that is that. And I just heard of this guy for the first time today, uh, and he sucks. Uh, Saturday Night Live uninvites Morgan Wallen after a quote unquote short sighted party in Alabama. <laughs> Morgan Wallen. So he's like a bro country kind of guy. Like his songs are, you know, like about, you know, they're, so, they're lists about things you bring to the lake, you know, those types of songs. <laughs> what? Got my crawdads in my fishing pole. Yeah. Well, no, no, that would make sense. No, I mean, like for a lake party, it's like, well, I got my belt buckle, swim trunks, lots of cases of beer, and a good girl in my pickup truck and a boat, and like you know that kind of shit. But queers aren't invited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's he's one of those guys. Okay. Three days before he was set to make his Saturday Night Live debut, country singer Morgan Waller has been told he will not be performing on the show after so. <laughs> Social media captured him partying with strangers without a mask last weekend in Alabama. Wallen made the announcement Wednesday from his hotel room in New York City, having already traveled to appear on the show. And he said to, that he spoke to show creator Lorne Michaels earlier in the day and was informed that he was removed from Saturday's show. Even if you if you think this is a hoax and you're a fucking moron about this uh, coronavirus and shit. Being on SNL, even though it's not what it once was, is very good for your career <laughs> and is a good payday. So why not just at least go through the motions for two weeks <laughs> and then go then go collect your pay, get showcased, get your album out, uh, you know, ideas out, yada, yada, and all that, and then go be a chuckle fuck. Wallen, a 27-year-old East Tennessee native, attended an Alabama Crimson Tide football game last Saturday in Tuscaloosa, per his Instagram feed. Multiple videos posted to TikTok show the singer posing maskless for photos, playing guitar in close circles of onlookers, and kissing women. Now, in this case, the Crimson Tide is referring to the blood they cough up after catching COVID, right? Yes, you put on the mask of the Red Death to hold back the Crimson Tide. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I love that because uh, it kind of raises the question of what of those things in that list is worse. Uh, posing maskless, uh, playing guitar in a circle, or kissing random women. <laughs> It's like, well, I guess uh, assuming assuming it was consensual, I guess the the women thing in time of COVID is is probably uh, the most directly dangerous, but ultimately the most innocuous socially. Yeah. But posing maskless for photos and really, let's talk about how this is a guy who shows up to the party with the guitar. Fuck this guy. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, fuck this person, regardless of a pandemic. <laughs> now even more so. Yeah. And I guarantee, I guarantee he's not playing his own music. He's like playing Wonderwall or some bullshit. Yeah. So uh, SNL had its season premiere last Saturday and has returned to its Manhattan studio under sa uh, strict safety precautions. Uh, performers, staff, and audience members must undergo rapid COVID nineteen testing, and all performers must wear masks uh, at all times. So I just found this out. SNL apparently because. New York is still shut down the same way LA is shut down. So they're having to do a thing where they're like paying the audience members to essentially like the loop that they found is like, I think they're paying the audience members to essentially be actors in a show. I saw a little bit of the beginning of SNL last weekend and I could be wrong, but if I recall correctly, a lot of them were first responders. Oh, is that right? So, you know, if shit were to go bad, they could be like, okay, I can, Metasize them or whatever. Yeah, uh, supposedly, yeah. Everyone in the crowd gets 150 bucks and has to sign a waiver. Uh, <laughs> that so it's every so it's every show with an audience in Los Angeles now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think that's well prior to COVID, I should say. Yeah. Well, have you been a paid audience member before? No, I've not. I have a couple times. It is what it is. What shows have you been a paid audience member in? I've been a paid audience member for uh, the Great Debate. But that was because we have a bunch of mutual friends that performed and are written for the show. What was the great debate? That's a show on sci-fi. Oh, oh, okay. I was Th earlier this year. Yeah. I was, I was thinking for some reason, I was like, was that the show that Lewis Black had? But I believe that show is called Root of All Evil. Oh, that was, uh, yeah, Root of All Evil, which if I was in Los Angeles at the time, I would have paid to be in that audience. But no, I've been a... Uh, 
uh, paid audience member for that and for With Bob and David. Oh, really? I either was paid for it or got in for free. <laughs> I don't remember which for that one. But I have been paid before for other shows. I just don't recall because they weren't that good. And essentially, you just sit there and chap your hands from clapping and go, ha, 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 yeah, yeah. at everything as loud as you can often way too often so this is this is a quote uh from him in one of the videos he said hey i'm sitting out here in tuscaloosa hanging out with my new friend (laughs) and it's just him like drunk sitting in a chair it looks like with some random people uh with the using the hashtags bama and roll tide at least he had a good time yeah yeah i think so well and the fucking weird part is that in his like apology video that he made he was like uh Oh, uh, you know, Lauren said uh, I could come back later or something. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, that seems like it's a really tightly run ship over there. If they're letting you come back, even though you fucked up this bad. SNL was is not the giant it once was. But then again, that's been said about that show for the last 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Every year since since Chevy Chase left after the first season, they're like, well, it's not going to be the same. Well, it's all downhill from here after, yeah. you know, Chevy Chase <laughs> champion of comedy left <laughs> yeah although I'll, i was saying oh. like uh you know snl is kind of where wwe was around circa like 2011 2012 where it was like all right bring back all the old people let's get old famous wrestlers in here instead of uh building new talent and shit like that well nowadays it's bring it, it much like wwe it's like hey let's bring in celebrities to do uh major roles yeah hey jim carrey's joe biden this time oh not an up-and-comer that's probably doesn't need the money yeah yeah exactly not a celebrity that doesn't need the money and same with uh alec uh rude little pig baldwin dude why why is he back i swear to god he quits the show every year and then he's just as back (laughs) oh please alec please make fun of the president again it's so goddamn weird i've got this uh this story is uh from albuquerque new mexico and this is really you know the famously over the summer the one of the largest fires in Southern California history was started by a gender reveal party uh, in the backyard where somebody, uh, I believe, exploded some tannerite and that set the mountain on fire. And then that set that part of the San Bernardino Mountains <laughs> range on fire. Mm-hmm. This is from New Mexico, and this is maybe slightly stupider than starting a fire with a gender reveal party. Sky lanterns have been spotted in Edgewood, New Mexico. Hold up. <laughs> What's a sky lantern? <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of what it sounds like. If you've ever been to one of those weddings where they have, uh, you know, like a, a way to send off the bride and groom, everybody lights a candle that's inside a paper lantern. Ah, uh, okay. And then they float into the sky. It's a it's a Chinese uh, thing, I guess. Originally, it's from China, but now you can, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of people do it at their weddings where they just light a candle and let the paper lantern kind of float away. Which you know, if you're doing that in florida or georgia or where i'm from alabama over a body of water yes or over a body of water you know a place where the you know the fire danger is a little bit lower whatever uh new mexico uh is a place that uh classically uh doesn't you know it's dry it's real you've seen you've seen roadrunner and coyote (laughs) it's uh it's pretty fucking dry out there yeah they're not usually uh they don't run it's his name's not the swamp runner (laughs) you know (laughs) Yeah. Jody Wilcox, who lives in the Green Ridge Acres neighborhood, said that the lanterns are a fire threat. Uh, Obviously, neighbors have seen them coming across the sky at two o'clock in the morning. What? So somebody they're not even from a wedding. Just some asshole is in his backyard lighting candles, put them in a paper lantern and just let them go. I just want to make a wish or 30. (laughs) I wish COVID would go away. And he just does that 15 times a night. I wish I didn't have this candle anymore. (laughs) Oh, it got granted. (laughs) Time for another candle. Another wish. Wilcox said the lanterns have landed in trees near her property. Quote, it's so dry and these things do not come down cool like people think. Like, yeah, they got fire in them. (laughs) I mean, you've seen all the ads for Sky Lanterns, right? Goes up hot, comes down cool. Uh, We do everything we can to protect ourselves in our neighborhood from fire, including clearing the land. And these coming from an outside source are a huge danger to that. Uh, Wilcox doesn't know who's launching the lanterns. Law enforcement also don't know. People are just asking others to be considerate. And uh, I think uh, at this late stage, we 
can no longer assume anyone's going to be considerate. That's a, that's a, that's a, a lot to ask. No, no. There's no such thing as, as presuming consideration anymore. We can't even get anyone to wear a mask for two and a half weeks. Right. I, I just love that no one knows who this paper lantern, New Mexican supervillain of some sort. I, I do like to imagine, yeah, it's just some really drunk guy who was going to have a wedding and then the bride ran away. And so now he's just got yeah. so many paper lanterns and he's just lighting each one off trying to wish away regret. And he's going to be taken down by New Mexico Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Fire Lantern is a super villain name. I'll just say that. <laughs> the the human wedding torch? I don't know. Uh, yeah, human wedding torch. Quote, uh, this is Wilcox again. Wilcox said, quote, when I see these things, I think of California and Washington and Oregon and the fires going on there. And that scares me. It really scares me. And I think it could happen here. It's like, yeah. I think that too. Yeah, I can. I think that. Yeah, I can. I absolutely think that too. The fire lantern releases his flames of morose into the sky <laughs> upon the innocent citizens of New Mexico. Oh, man. Well, uh, Eric, uh, are you ready to jam, man? Yeah, let's get jamming. Oh, and here it is. That is our jam of the day. You know it. You hate it. It's Billy Ray Cyrus's achy, breaky heart. Um,. <laughs> What, what is your experience with this song? I mean, this is a song, obviously, of people our age. This shit was everywhere in, like, 92 when it came out. I was a wee boy when the song came out, and it was fucking everywhere. In uh, I grew up in Toledo, Ohio, and it just kept playing anywhere, any point, any time, all times. And what's sad is you can't even escape it when you hate it. Yeah. <laughs> like, because... There were so many song parodies, so many of this song. Like, all the people in class would be like, achy, breaky, fart, and I might as well throw up and kill this man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And in their own little lyrics that we're, only Weird Al could bring up. Because he did a parody of this, didn't he? Achy, breaky song? Yeah, so very similar to the Nirvana uh, parody that he did, uh, you know, where that song wasn't really making fun of you know food or any of the other usual tv any of the other usual weird out topics achy breaky song was specifically about how this song is annoying as hell the chorus was don't play that song that achy breaky song oh that's right yeah uh -huh. i'm gonna talk about something that's nietzsche as fuck are you ready for this oh yeah so uh i was a part of the wrestling observer slash figure four message boards for a while and someone uh, one of the popular things to do, this is like mid-aughts and something like that, was Terry Funk, back when when WWE and ECW, like WWE brought back ECW for, for a cup of coffee. With such extreme athletes as The Big Show and Vince McMahon. Oh yeah, and the zombie. Don't forget the zombie. <laughs> but the popular thing to do on that board was to create like music drops and stuff to have them play on the podcast yeah and one of the more popular drops was to take a promo terry funk did that only appeared to my knowledge only appeared on wwe.com because terry funk and tommy dreamer were going to be in a tag match against edge and uh, mick foley and terry funk looks into the camera and says my daddy always told me never trust a man whose ass was wider than his shoulders. And that fits you to a T, Foley. <laughs> he had a name for people like you. He called you a satchel ass. <laughs> and I think the reason this has been lost to time is, and this is just according to my memory, the cameraman started laughing, which meant the camera shot was shaking up and down. And then Terry Funk just got more fishes going, Satchel ass! Satchel ass! <laughs> so everyone took the drops of him saying Satchel ass and put them into songs. And one of the most popular ones was, Don't break my ass! I've said it, Satchel ass! <laughs> don't, don't think you understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's get down into these uh, comments here on Achy, Breaky Heart uh, by Billy Ray Cyrus. Mary D9444 from one day ago. He is the hottest male singer I have ever seen. Sweet Jesus! 
I mean, look at that. Look at that sexy ass mullet. There was a lot of this for women of a certain age. Apparently, he's hotter than snot. He's uh, people. Uh, people are into it. Billy Ray could get it. Yeah, you can understand how Miley happened. <laughs> There's. Oh, believe me, we're going to be getting into some Miley stuff in a second here. Oh no. Oh no. Way too much of that, frankly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Annabelle Carter from four years ago. This guy's hip shaking could rival Shakira. <laughs> I want to see that. I would pay to see that. Uh, if you told me, I mean, there's not a lot of entertainment out there right now, and you could responsibly make that television show where Billy Ray Cyrus and Shakira have an ass shaking contest. Now, who who would be the judges, the the panel of judges for that type of contest? Uh, obviously, it would be uh, Lisa Marie Presley. Uh, uh-huh. You know, the scion of the most famous hip shaker. Uh, of course, of course. But I would have also included, like, probably J-Lo and Tom Jones as the field of three. Yeah, that works. That works. Uh, Mr. Tom from one month ago. Lord, I bet if he knew what Hollywood would do to his kids, he would have had stopped singing right there and went back to Ashland, Kentucky. Okay. To do what? I, I guess not go to Hollywood and not not have his kids in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just to, just to continue to play country songs for free peanuts and beer. I like that he said, I bet if he knew what Hollywood would do to his kids, it was like, uh, make them fantastically yeah. wealthy. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> make them not worried about anything for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Vivian Sharma from a week ago. Damn. Cool music. His daughter must listen nicely. Dot, dot, dot. LOL. What? Is he is he saying that Billy Ray Cyrus threatens his daughter via music that he produces? <laughs> it sounds sinister. Miley, you sit there and listen to your dad's song, and you better do it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> or else. <laughs> uh, I venge. I vinge, revenge, we all vinge. We vinge. I vinge from one month ago. This song should replace Dixie as the national anthem of the Confederate States of America. <laughs> Which, uh, there's, there's so much of that I love. First of all, uh, just I have to be a know-it-all history buff real quick. Uh-huh. Uh, God Save the South was the anthem of the Confederacy. And Dixie was just their marching song they enjoyed. That was like kind of more the the populist anthem, if you will. Uh, and second of all, uh, are you saying that they should go back in time and give them <laughs> achy, breaky heart? Because I would hazard to say that if McClellan heard the resonant chords of achy breaky heart coming from over a hill it would terrify him more than the rebel yell because the electric guitar hadn't been invented yet just the sound of the distortion would have made them shat their (laughs) military pantaloons (laughs) yeah yeah ulysses grant unconditional surrender grant stands no chance against it's I, and I just like that the Yankees would have drum and fife, you know, going, and then just from across the field, you just hear, or oh, tear my heart. Why what is the right? Geneva Convention signed? Because it, uh, playing that song could be considered a war crime, <laughs> given the circumstances behind it. Uh, well, you know, funny you mention that. That song actually has been used in the past by the FBI to basically keep people up and get information out of them. Yeah, I think it was one of the songs listed to torture people in Gitmo, I uh-huh. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that so. Makes, that along with Barney's uh, The Dinosaurs, I Love You, You Love Me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ivy Sar from five months ago, <laughs> and this is some cursed Halloween shit here. This song reminds me of my great-grandma, she had a little cowboy doll, and when you pressed his hand, he'd sing this song and dance. Every time we visited, we'd listen to it five times. Was it always five times? I want to see how deep his neurosis goes. There's two details in there that are weird. One is the specificity of we would listen to it five times. But the other one is that it says that the cowboy would dance. And I like to imagine, you know, it's probably on a stand or something and his legs jiggle. Yeah. 
it's way funnier to imagine it's like Woody from Toy Story and it's, you just stands up and fucking dances creepily. Same expression on its face <laughs> as it's singing. Just dead eyes, just somehow staring at through your soul and just fucking is doing a two-step. Legit, I think that this was also a song that played like remember those the dancing pepsi can oh yes yes i do yeah i guarantee that this was a song for either one of those or more than likely a dancing natty light can or some form of bud light or some beer can shit with sunglasses (laughs) uh andrew crouch from four days ago that's a tough name crouch (laughs) <laughs> I'm always ducking behind things. <laughs> Straighten your legs, Crouch. <laughs> uh, Andrew Crouch from four days ago. Good old song there by Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy old line dancing. Going on there to God. Very old video now. Good upload for the video, though. <laughs> That man is, the light is just fading from his eyes. And he's just, that's the last thing he ever wrote. He's dying. His brain is shutting down. He's wistful into the nostalgia of an achy, breaky heart as his soul leaves his body. (laughs) He says, I'm going on there to God. Very old video now. The (laughs) best times are behind me. Good upload, though. Thanks. Uh, Don't tear my heart, my <laughs> achy, breaky. <laughs> Lord, accept my heart, my achy, breaky heart. I just want to come into heaven. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if you take my heart, my achy, breaky heart, I swear I won't do any more sinning. Woo! Uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, LZ from a month ago, and I don't know if this is true, Every race loved this song when it came out. I remember it as if it was yesterday. Every race. Every race. I don't. It's. It seems like it was just white people, to, in my recollection. In my recollection, it was only white people. That said, I can't disprove. No, no. His theory, though. I. I mean, I bet you could find one representative from every race you could get together a very small rainbow coalition of people who enjoyed this <laughs> song the only other exposure i think that maybe maybe what they're talking about is that in many many pe classes <laughs> in public schools oh christ they taught line dancing and they taught line dancing to this song Oh, line dancing, okay. Or square dancing, or whatever. Well, line dancing and square dancing are two different things. Line dancing, I don't know. Square dancing, uh, racist origins. So, maybe it's wrong. I don't know. Does it? Which one is is the one where they're calling the, the moves? That's the difference, right? Well, both have moves being called, but line dancing is everyone doing the same motion and looking like a creepy mirage uh-huh. back and forth. But square dancing... It's literally you're in a square and with like a number of people. It's like swing your partner yeah, around the back, <laughs> put a potato in its sack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do see do around the pig and finish it off with a magic jig. You yeah. know. Or, oh yeah, yeah. No, I remember. Uh, I I used to work at a community arts center. I know I've told this story on the show, but I used to work at a community arts center and they had the I guess it's the square dancing class because there was an actual guy there talking. And they had it like, you know, once a week at like five o'clock. And I was, you know, I was like kind of the guy who answered the phones. So I always heard it happening through the doors in like the big room that they had there at the art center. And the guy had this weird instrumental, like almost like karaoke sounding version of Billy Jean of all things. So not even a country <laughs> song. And I, I tweeted that this was right when I got on Twitter. So this would have been one of my, like, I, I swear to God, this is probably one of my first, like, 12 tweets I ever did uh, was I just was live tweeting the shit he was saying. And one of the things he said was, he was like, now swing that gypsy woman in a big old circle while I try to get excited over you. What? <laughs> that was one of the things. Like, He's like, so swing that gypsy woman in a big old circle while I try to get excited over you. Like that? 
And I was like, like, what? Am I in hell? Did I die? And this is just hell is sitting at a a desk and faintly hearing a guy doing weird European racism through a... You see, I thought it would just be like, Billy Jean is not my lover. Duck around and look for cover. Maybe it started like that, but one presumes this man has been using this same track since Thriller came out. So shit has just gotten weird. Yeah. Fuck. (laughs) Damn. Do you think he revises it every year depending on how sad his life has gotten from the previous year? No, it never changed week to week because I would always hear it. I heard it every week and it was always the same for... I don't remember the other songs necessarily. The one... uh, uh, I think he did A Thousand Miles From Nowhere by Dwight Yoakam is the other one that I remember. Uh, and that's actually a good song, and he almost killed it for me. Uh, See, now now I just want, uh, if square dancing is still a thing, because it really shouldn't, in my opinion, because I don't, or at least not in public schools. What's what's the thing with it? I don't actually know the, the story. I think it was a way to um, indoctrinate uh, white kids into white culture and prevent, you know, that new jazz that was out there from intoxicating. Oh, God. Is that why they t- teach it in school? <laughs> At least that's from what I recall. I could be dead wrong. All I know is this, is that public education is fucked if for gym class you're being taught square dancing and for health class you're being taught boating. That's fucked up. And that happened to me. <laughs> well, uh, to be fair, we fucking danced to this song and then they also taught us the electric slide. So they were, you know, they were trying to keep it somewhat level all kids need to learn the electric slide otherwise you can't be invited to the wedding reception that's right that's right (laughs) tall beachy blonde from four months ago liar (laughs) it's kind of sad now that he has long scraggly hair and an earring tattoos and his daughter's twerking on dudes People are really mad about Miley Cyrus being a grown person who can do what they want. (laughs) Problem one, he's always had long, uh, stringy, greasy hair. He has what I like to call the Bret Hart look. Yeah. Number two, I think the earring was something that he had during this era anyway. Yeah, yeah, I believe he did. (laughs) I will say this about good old Billy Ray. He lets his daughter be his daughter. Yeah, but for good reason, too, is because he's uh, he's in a fucking mansion because of her. So it's like, hey, something's working. Yeah, something's working, and it's just like, eh, you know, I mean, she's her own person. She can make her own choices with that creepy smile of hers. <laughs> uh, River Games from five months ago. These were the good times of country. I don't even like country, and some of my favorite songs are Achy Breaky Heart, Big Bad John, Big Rock Candy Mountain, Take Me Home Country Roads and Daddy's Hands. Those are classics. So if you haven't listened to any of them, which, I mean, you've all listened to Achy Breaky Heart, you need to hear them, like, right now. And you will be a changed. And then they wrote man, but then they put woe in parentheses. So I guess instead of saying man or woman, they just said one thing. You will be a changed man or woman once you listen to them. Well, first of all, the word's person. That's why that's there. Yeah. Non-binary people, you don't get to, you don't get a change at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's only cis men and cis women. Right, right. But what's funny is she's uh, this person says these were the good times of country and then lists a bunch of songs. Uh, just so y'all know, Achy Break Your Heart comes out in 92. Big Bad John by Jimmy Dean is 1961 and Big Rock Candy Mountain by Harry McClintock 1928. <laughs> So she's saying the good times of country music were between 1928 and 1992, which I would agree. So uh, just say all of time. Uh, I mean, Big Bad John is, is uh, as the kids say, it slaps. Yeah, yeah, that's Jimmy Dean. He ain't just about sausage, kids. No. He, he's, got, he's got bangers. <laughs> uh, bangers and mash. Bingo. Ha-ha. <laughs> that's a tweet for tomorrow for no one. Uh <laughs> uh, Jason Aaron Scalmato from four months ago. I broke a penny when we beat Britain itself. Now swallow yourself. Billy Punk Atomics was charged. So we still beat the British in, in 1981. This is the worst haiku I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angel Luisa from three months ago. That's an awesome song shit on younger people 
don't listen to this stuff. I'm 13. I love this type of songs. <laughs> shit, on, shit on younger people. So 12-year-olds? I guess, yeah. It sounds like a cry to say, hey, young people like this music too. Stop shitting on us. But then it's a call to action to shit on them. I think this is part of a genre of YouTube comment that we, we've talked about before of people just being like, I'm fucking 12 and people in my grade don't get this music, but I fucking love Journey. Uh, I think Journey's the best band and people in my grade are doo-doo heads. And that is a very common thing. So I think it's some variation on that, but this person uh, doesn't know syntax, so it's just all over the fucking yard. Well, he's only 13. <laughs> yeah. Or a 50-year-old acting as a 13-year-old. Yes, yes, exactly. A 50-year-old Russian man being like, I am American, 12-year-old. Oh, you hear this Biden man? He's no good. <laughs> I, 13-year-old boy from America, know he's bad. And finally, Kane Brown's a bitch from four months ago. <laughs> you know what? They're right. You gotta love the uh, the screen name that's just directly attacking a person. It's up there. <laughs> Kane Brown's a bitch at four months ago. God. Yeah, dude. Here we go. The big one. The one, the father of creator of Wrecking Ball. Amazing legacy. Legend shit. <laughs> Legend shit. I like it. <laughs> it's Billy Ray Cyrus, the legend shit himself. <laughs> uh, and that is Achy Breaky Heart by motherfucking Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, my God. Well, that was fun. Uh, Eric Barnes, please tell people where they can find you on the Internet. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Eric W. Barnes. Uh, if you like hearing the voice that I made, follow Heart Fist Brain on Twitter and join that Patreon myself and... Uh, my podcast partner, Marina Ryman, do Heavy Light, which is a Patreon podcast in which we talk about feelings and then pop culture in that order. And it's uh, heavy, yet it's light and fun. And on top of that, you can listen to Rivers and I talk as people play fight by watching the Brian Kendricks Wrestling Pro Wrestling on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, I believe you can buy a shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WPW. And I think they were having a sale uh, by the time this airs. They are 20% off at, at ProWrestlingTees.com also slash the goods pod. You can get 20% off a uh, goods from the woods t-shirt while you're over there getting a, uh, a fuck King Desi shirt. <laughs> wow. It's like I segued into that. Boom. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I was going to recommend the same thing. I it's, it's fun when people who listen to this show find WPW. Cause I don't, uh, you know, I talk about it a lot and I think people think I'm joking that we, we do commentary for a, a really fucking fun and ridiculous uh, wrestling promotion out here in LA. And, uh, we've got every single episode of the show is at that YouTube, youtube.com slash wrestling pro wrestling. If you look like punk rock science nerds and, uh, giraffes that are also Godzilla monster references, that's your show. Yeah, we, we have a real good time over there. So yeah, check that out. Follow us on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Once again, I uh, mentioned this yesterday, but I'll mention it here. If you missed our fundraiser uh, last Saturday, we did a big fundraiser for our friend Ian Dent, who is running to become America's first trans coroner. Uh, if you missed that show, I have it on demand for you. All you got to do is go to actblue.com slash donate slash trans coroner donate any amount of money uh the more you can give the better obviously but hey if you just got a buck and you want to see the show that'll help too so any amount of money donated at actblue.com slash donate slash trans corner take a screenshot of the receipt direct message it to me either at the goods pod at rivers langley my email is save rivers at gmail.com or uh i'm on facebook find a way to get hold of me i'm not hard to find uh i'm the only rivers langley on the planet so just look me up if you send me a screenshot of that receipt i will send you a private link and you can watch almost the entire show we did have uh one of our performers is working on a new record so they asked us to you know cut their part of it but you're getting roy wood jr gareth reynolds keith carey 
Brandy Posey, and Anna Valenzuela. I'm hosting the whole thing. It's really goddamn funny, and you'll get that just for donating to our friend Ian's campaign. At least, uh, e- even though we got bummed out by the VP debates tonight, and the only good thing happening on that was a fly landing on a man's head, there are actual cool things happening all across the country, and this is the race that that we've decided to kind of put our time into. Every bit's going to count right up until Election Day. So, uh, like I said on the broadcast, and I said yesterday, think global, but act local, and donate and get yourself some, uh, some great stand up comedy from some uh, some great LA and uh, elsewhere comedians. So uh, that's that's my pitch. Uh, find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley. Go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash the goods pod. Go to Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe. Show the attitude of gratitude, and we'll see.